Howdy spacers, welcome to Blank Space Dolls' first YouTube tutorial. My name is Jacob, for those of you who don't know, and on the screen you're going to be seeing some of my previous customs. To check out my full range in my vault, make sure to check me out on Instagram, at Blank Space Dolls. Special shout out to Kim from Luna and Stella Dolls on Instagram for reaching out to me to do a fabric swap with her, where we sent a package of fabrics to each other and made a doll based on those fabrics. So make sure to stay tuned to check out what I made. Alright, so let's get started. This project was heavily inspired by high fashion runway couture gowns, mermaid style wedding gowns, mixed textures, and detailed embellishments and embroidery with heavy influences from designers like Alexander McQueen and Victor and Rolf. Make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and don't forget to check me out on my other social media handles for future customs. So let's begin. For this project, I decided to use a Nephra Denial body because I do like the big sister body type and I thought that it would fit better in a mermaid style gown versus the average Monster High body. She does, however, have molded gloves on, which I think will still work for this project after a little bit of a paint job. All right, so here I begin prepping the head for customization by cutting a slit in the back of the head after the plugs have been removed. and using needle nose pliers to pull out all of that nasty hair and glue to get it nice and clean on the inside to prepare for rerouting. Right, and once all of that hair and glue is removed, I go ahead and use 100% acetone, cotton rounds, and cotton swabs to begin removing the factory paint and preparing the head for a face up. Side note, am I the only one that tries to remove the eyes in one swipe? I think we've all tried to do it at at least one point or another, but I just think it's so funny. And once all the factory paint is removed from the face, I go in with the acetone and cotton round and begin removing the paint from the scalp. Now that the head's nice and clean, we're ready to reroute. For the rerouting on this doll, I went ahead and used this ivory Kanekalon braiding hair that I found at a local beauty supply here, and I just measured it out to be the length of her entire body, taking into account the amount of length you're going to lose in the rerouting process or the link that's actually inside of the head. And I'm actually gonna use my homemade rerouting tool, which is just a X-Acto knife and a needle inserted into the top of that. And I begin plugging the hair. One plug at a time. Just keep plugging, just keep plugging. And for this doll, I'm gonna mainly focus on the outer perimeter of the hairline because she is gonna have a high ponytail style, so you don't have to worry about rerouting the inside because you'll go in with acrylic paint to paint in the rest of that. And I actually had quite a bit of extra hair left for a future project. Um, for the painting, I'm actually going to be using these two acrylic paints in pearl and white and actually mix them together to give a more natural match to the ivory color of the hair that I chose. And I begin painting that on the scalp. This does actually take four to five coats to get it opaque with ample drying time in between, so be patient and just let it dry completely before going back over. But eventually you'll come out with a color that's quite opaque like what you're seeing here, and I'm just doing a check to make sure that there's a close match to the hair color and the scalp color that I chose. And then once the plugging and painting of the scalp is done, you'll go on with Fabri-Tac glue to just seal everything in. This is what the hair looks like once it's done. This has been boil washed, which removed the texture of the Kanekalon hair and came out nice, shiny, and smooth. We'll cover the hair and do the initial coat of Mr. Super Clear. And it's face-up time. I begin the initial blushing and contouring using a combination of Mungio Soft Pastels and Morphe makeup brushes. I find makeup brushes work a little bit better for the blushing of the face because they're a little bit fluffier and there are a bunch of different shapes and sizes that you can pick depending on the exact detailing and project you need it for. And for the contouring, I do go in with a lighter brown. Um, closer to the skin tone but just a little bit deeper and then the blushing I'm using the same pink that I use on all of my dolls just like a hot pink and it does look a little bit stronger in the beginning but once you seal it with MSC it's going to deepen the color a little bit so I will have to go back over it one more time to make sure that the color payoff is exactly as I need it. And for the actual detailing in the face I do use General's Multi Pastel Pastel Chalk Pencils. 
Um, I use a combination of that and Derwent watercolor pencils, but I found that the chalk pastel pencils just give me a little bit more color payoff, especially in like the whites and the pastel pinks that I need, um, especially like in the waterline and the whites of the eyes. And you'll see that here in the video, like the white in one coat, it already looks more opaque than like a normal one would. You do still have to go over it in multiple coats, but it does give a great payoff in the first coat. And this is what it looks like after the first initial layer, then you're just gonna seal it with Mr. Super Clear and go over everything again. With each additional layer, you want to just continue to define all of the original lines you drew and adding in small details such as more lines into the waterline, shading on the eyelid, and shading on the lips. And continuing to use your white pencil to go in and really define those highlighted areas such as the whites of the eyes, the whites of the lips, and right above the eyelids. And you know the drill, just go ahead and seal that again with Mr. Super Clear. And at this point my camera died, so off camera I actually went in and darkened the eyeliner with black, went ahead and did the eyebrows, and deepened the colors in the lips and added a highlight spot to her nose. This is where I make the switch to my Derwent watercolor pencils to begin filling in the iris colored part of her eye, giving myself a nice template to follow later on when I go back in with acrylic paints to brighten the color up. And I begin filling in the iris with my acrylic paints in light gray just to begin to define that iris color a little bit more while also switching back and forth between acrylic paints and Derwent watercolor pencils and my pastel pencils just to refine the lines a little bit more as I go. And all the while continuing to go back to my white pencil and filling in those highlight lines now adding more around the eyes, more detailing on the eyebrows, and more onto the lips. And now I begin using my black chalk pastel pencil to just go in and refine that iris color a little bit more. You can see the difference between one eye and the other, one with the shading and one without, just to again to add more shadows into the eye and give it more depth while also going back to my Gunmetal Derwent watercolor pencil and adding a shadow under the lid and bottom waterline. And then I just add the pupils using my nail art dotting tool and touch it up a little bit with the gray acrylic paint. And switching back and refining that lid line a little bit more, adding more shading and coloring to the bottom lash line. I am quite different from a lot of doll artists, whereas I cannot do a lot of bottom lashes, so I end up just doing one and that's all they get, so um, I guess you could say that's just the way that I do my bottom lashes. And then going back in and continuing to refine all of those highlighted colors with my white watercolor pencil, while adding details to the iris just to brighten up that bottom portion of it so it doesn't feel as dark. And then here I started to add the eyebrow hairs, but unfortunately I completely forgot to seal between that layer and so the hair strokes are not going on as I planned. So you'll see me here in a second go back in with my brush trying to lighten that color and then I just scratch over it with white color pencil and it still doesn't work so I end up fixing them off camera. You know, things like that happen you guys. You just have to take it for what it is, seal it and then try again. And then to add the life-giving gloss, I actually glossed the lips and just the iris colored part of my eye. I think a lot of artists do it differently. Some artists gloss the entire eye, some artists only gloss the waterline, but I only gloss the iris, so the colored part of the eye. Just because for photography purposes, it doesn't tend to shine too, too much. Um, and I, of course, love the gloss on the lips. It just makes them feel a little bit more alive. And now that the gloss is added, we're gonna go ahead and remove her hair cover and see the final look with the hair. 
This is a really exciting part for me because you'll get to see the face up with the hairstyle that you've done for the first time. And I really like that the white shading above her eye kind of brings out the white in her hair. Now on to the outfit. The materials that I use for these string pearls, this lace trim, an embroidered mesh material, and then just like a basic ivory cotton. And then you'll see me start to draw out my skirt pattern here, just roughly sketching it out onto the paper, the shape that I wanted. I knew that I wanted it to be a mermaid style gown, so I knew that I wanted to take note of where her actual knees were and kind of build around that. And for this pattern, I did fold the piece of paper in half, just so that way I would have two halves of the pattern that I created. And once that pattern is drawn, I go in with my fancy pink scissors and cut it out making note of where that knee line was that I drew and just refining the shape a little bit. Um, I do want it to be a mermaid style gown, so I'm just making note of where the front and the back is just to give myself a point of reference. And I want the front of the gown to be a little bit more rounded. And then I cut a second piece with it having a little bit more of an egg shape just to kind of give it that train that I was looking for. So you'll see me put the pieces together here and I'm just checking to make sure that the back side has a little more of an egg shape. And then I tape those two patterns together and that becomes my pattern piece for the mermaid skirt. Once the skirt pattern is complete, I go ahead and transfer that onto my ivory cotton fabric and begin adding the lace trim onto the perimeter of the skirt. Fun fact, the skirt alone took around seven yards of the lace trim, so about two and a half rolls of the lace trim itself which just goes to show you how much work was put into just the skirt. But I begin coming up the train part first, making a perfect circular shape. So that way it makes it a little bit easier and a little more even as I continue to go around and finish it. Here you'll see the skirt complete. It took me a very long time to add all the layers of lace to it, but I'm really happy with how it came out and make note of that seam allowance that was left. Now on to the bodice. For this one, I just took the Monster High base I was using and went ahead and laid her onto the fabric and just kind of went around the shape of it. I did use a stretchy fabric so that way it would be form-fitting and this is just kind of going to be for the underlay of the dress. Um, because I'm using a sheer material, I needed something to go underneath it. And this is just a stretchy, um, almost like a lycra material, the same thing that they use for dance outfits. Here you'll see the slip dress complete. I just turned the pattern inside out. Here I begin adding the mesh detailing. I pin it onto the doll in the areas that I want it and begin hand stitching all the way around her arm and down her chest. And I will also tuck it in after turning the pattern inside out and sew securing stitches around the perimeter of it so it doesn't slip around. And here I just begin to look at the way that I want to position the embroidered fabric on top of it. Um, testing out the skirt, how I want to put the pearl details on there, um, and just checking the fit. I actually did a lot of the hand stitching for the dress off camera because it needed to be very detailed and I did end up hand stitching it. So that was done off camera, but you can see here kind of the seam line down the side of the back. And what I'm going to do now is begin pinning up the bottom of the skirt because I want to attach the mermaid piece to it before I finish the top. And I actually attached the mermaid skirt portion to the actual underlying lycra material underneath just because I wanted it to hit at a specific point and I wanted the embroidered mesh material to kind of lay over the dress to have a more form fitted look and I also tacked down the bottoms of the embroidered mesh skirt just so that way it felt a little bit more like one continuous piece and didn't feel like a separate piece from the mermaid skirt bottom. And after some strategic tacking on the top bodice part I'm moving on to the gloves. You can see here I painted one of the gloves with the same pearl and white mixture I used for the head and I kind of fast forwarded because my camera actually ended up dying and I just did the same thing. I sewed the gloves by hand onto the arm of the doll. And you can see a little bit of a seam line where the original sleeve met the top part of the sleeve, but that doesn't bother me because I wanted it to look like gloves anyways. Off camera, I went ahead and made her a fascinator using the same laces on her skirt, pearl detailing, a pom-pom, and white feathers. 
And I also grabbed a pair of Rochelle Goyle shoes from my stock box, painted them with the same paint mixture I used for the glove and the scalps, added an iridescent sole, a few pearl details, and two fork ribbon bows for the ankle, and added those to the doll. And even though the shoes won't be seen under the train of the skirt, I think paying attention to small details like these make the custom feel wholesome and complete. And then moving on to one of my favorite details is the 3D lashes. I actually put these on all of my dolls. I just think that it gives them a more lifelike look and just makes them look a little bit more elegant and expensive. And you'll see here they've been placed on. And the last detail I'm going to do is add a little bit of shimmer using this Finabear micro pigment and my Morphe brush, of course. Um, just to give her skin a little bit more of a shine. And once that highlight is added, we're going to go ahead and finish everything off and take a look at her final photos. And here she is, my Winter Couture Custom. I had so much fun making this doll and thought she was a great way to kick off the new year and start my channel. I want to give a special thank you to all of you who have subscribed already and all of my future subscribers. I hope that you guys come back, stick around, hang out with me, and make sure to tap that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. And go ahead and leave a comment below if you can think of some names that would fit this custom really well, or ideas for any future customs you may have. And remember, you can always check out my previous customs on Instagram at Blank Space Dolls, where in my world, there's always a blank space. Let's customize it together. Until next time, spacers, see you soon.